So in this next tutorial, we'll be tuning a convolutional neural network on the MNIST data set. The MNIST data set uh, contains a series of handwritten digits and the categories or the digit numbers that each of those handwritten images correspond to. Um, we'll start with importing our plotting functions, the loop API optimize function, uh, the usual render and init notebook plotting helper functions, as well as some helper functions for the convolutional neural network, loading the data set, training, evaluating, and creating a convolutional neural network regress uh, classifier. <clears throat> Here we'll uh, set a manual seed to ensure reproducibility, uh, run it on a GPU if one's available, otherwise run it on the CPU, uh, and load our data um, into training, validation, and test so that we can fairly assess uh, how well our optimization did in improving the classification accuracy. So uh, as before, we define our objective function. Uh, here it's called train evaluate, where it takes a dictionary, a parameterization dictionary that maps from the parameter names to a specific value or instantiation of um, those values uh, during a single iteration. And within it, we'll instantiate the convolutional neural, net neural network, train it, and then evaluate it. Uh, and we'll notice that this returns a float. Um, so when you're doing single objective optimization and you do not have multiple outcomes, uh, that you're looking at, uh, you can just return uh, a single value and the algorithm will assume that corresponds to your single objective. Uh, or you can specify it explicitly, um, uh, but that gives you the flexibility to move from single objective optimization to multi-objective optimization or optimization with multiple outcomes and constraints on them. Uh, so then we run the loop uh, where we have our parameters, learning rate, and momentum uh, that uh, have log scale bounds for learning rate going from 1 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, to 0 0.4, and then 0 to 1 for momentum. We'll pass in our evaluation function, and we'll provide an objective name, uh, accuracy, which will be assumed to be uh, this float value um, that's returned. Uh, so really, we could name this whatever we want. Uh, unless we're using the uh, key value uh, pairs. Um, you know, if we're going to do something like accuracy mapping to that float value. So uh, here we have, again, our best parameters, and we can take a look at the means and the covariances uh, here. And uh, also look at the response surface, the mean and the standard errors. Uh, in the parameter space. Since this is a two-dimensional parameter space, um, we can visualize it uh, directly with momentum versus learning rate, uh, where the darker green values correspond to higher classification accuracies, or in other words, better solutions. Uh, and then we can, again, look at an optimization trace where we see that the classification accuracy is increasing uh, with an increasing number of objectives. Uh, and then finally, we evaluate this on a test set to make sure that we're not overfitting. In other words, that we're not uh, just overconfident in this set of hyperparameters, um, making sure that it's more generalizable to data that uh, hasn't been seen by the model yet. Uh, so in, do, in running that, we can see a, a relatively high and comparable classification accuracy to what we had before uh, in here with around 95% uh, um, on the optimized accuracy.